What's up, guys? This is HH Trader back with another Street Smart Edge tutorial video. I'm gonna have to make these videos shorter. Uh, the editing on them is absolutely devastating, editing a 30 minute video. So I'm gonna make them shorter uh, for quicker edits and quicker video output. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to go over the next part of the Street Smart Edge um, uh, all in one feature. And the next part of the, uh, I guess, the ticket builder is right here. And we have our quantity, our venue, our order type, limit price, and timing. Then we have brackets that we can form, special conditions, and then we have our buy, sell, short, and cancel all button. All right, so let's go ahead and run through this really quick. First thing that we have here is our quantity. So how many shares do you want to take in a particular uh, position? Now with this, you can always, let's say if you uh, want to break down your, your entry positions into blocks of money. So let's say if I want to do $300, $300 per position. Well, what I can do is hit this little dollar sign here and it'll bring up a little box, a little dialog box that you can move around. It says calculate shares. So if I want to do a $300 block for a position, I will type in 300 and hit OK. All right. And so I can get 20 shares. And this 20 shares is based on the price that is set over here. So 20 shares for $300 on this particular position very quick and it's automatic it automatically calculates off the price that is entered here if I were to change this price let's say if I were to come down here and click 1560 automatically jumps up there and I can drop in the 300 again and it says okay you can get 19 shares at that price okay the next thing we have is the venue so in in Street Smart Edge they have a couple of venues during the intraday, we use the smart venue. Okay, so the smart venue is the quickest routing method during intraday. Then we have our pre market venue and our after hours venue. Now, pre market is going to be well, it depends on where you are, but where I am, a uh, pre market opens up at about 6 a.m. and goes to 8 30. Um, AM so that's central time um, intraday is from 8 30 down to 3 o'clock after hours is from 3 o'clock to 5 30 yeah 5 30 so you have to look at your current location to see when your market is open but uh, street smart edge is smart enough to actually let you know what is available so right now you can place orders. Now the market is closed right now, but you can place still place your orders on the smart for an intraday or you can place orders in the pre-market. The after hours has been blocked out because we don't know what's going to happen after hours. So you can't really do those positions. After hours is what we are in right now. Currently I'm filming this at night, so that market is closed. The next thing is the order type. So we have different orders here. We have the limit the market order, the stop, stop limit, and trailing stop. So what the limit order is going to allow you to do, it's going to say, okay, I want to buy, let's say uh, the 1560. I want to buy this price or better. Okay, so if I'm going long, that means I want it cheaper than 1560. If I'm going short, that means I would like to be filled higher than 1550 on a limit position. Market orders basically put you in line. Um, it can really fill you anywhere and it can be very, very uh, dangerous when it comes to very volatile stocks because it can fill you 15 cents to 50 cents above where you expect it to get in. The next one is the stop order, which means, hey, if it's a buy stop, if the price comes up to this level, I don't want to miss out on the rest of the run upward. Right. So I want to put a stop order here to catch that run. 
Now with stop orders, you will have a little bit of slippage every time it kind of just does that. Even on limit orders, uh, you have a little bit of slippage, especially on volatile stocks. With a stop sell order, what it's saying is, okay, the price is coming down. If you're long, you want to get out, get me out. If you're going short, well, you want to get in on that movement down. So you can use a stop order for that. The next one is the stop limit order. So this is the stop order, but it's initiating a limit order. So it's saying, okay, once the price reaches a certain point, let's say if we were doing the 1560 that was out there again or whatever, once the price uh, um, reaches a certain point, so my stop price is the 1499, I want to buy at the limit price or better. Okay, that's all that means. Um, trailing stops. Okay, so trailing stops are going to just follow the price by a certain percentage. I guess I could have clicked on each of these. Yeah, uh, stop order pretty much looks the same. The only difference is the day, the timing. So, do you want it to last a day or GTC, which is good till canceled? All right. Um, we looked at the stop limit. So this is the price that we want to initiate it. And the limit price is where we want to buy it or better. OK, so if it's a buy, it will be buy or come cheaper. If it's a short, well, I want this price or higher for the move down. All right. Trailing stops. Trailing stops, we have our whatever amount that we want to follow by. Right now, we are set to points, and points are pretty much just cents. So if I were to put in here 50, that's 50 cents, follow it by 50 points, 50 cents, okay? If I were to change this to percentage, and I said follow it by, let's say, 3%, this is 3%. So as it moves, it's going to trail that thing 3%. Now, I personally always use the point system because it just makes more sense to me. Uh, followed by 50 cents, followed by um, 25 cents or whatever that you want to follow it by. This one also has the option to just have it for the day. So when the day closes, that order gets canceled. But if it's GTC, that order will sit there forever until it um, is initiated. All right. So that, that is some of those. The next thing we need to look at are the brackets. We went through the order types. Let's go back up here to limit. We have some brackets down here that we can do. We can actually set a profit exit. So let's say if we did buy at 1560 or better. And we wanted to take profit once the price, the ticker price or the stock price went up, let's say a dollar or two dollars. We could set a profit exit right here and we can put in here. Let's just do two, two dollars or two points, right? Two points. And it's going to show us our estimated price of exit. So we want to be getting out at the 1760. Now, that is for a buy okay if you're going short you get the estimate for the short here and it'll it'll um, do the same thing we want a two dollar profit to the downside and you can see that is two dollars subtracted from that all right now the trailing stop exit and the stop loss exit is kind of redundant because you could do these up here as well so I'm not gonna go over there it's literally the same thing that we just saw up here uh, but it will calculate your estimated price of exit. Special conditions, we're not going to worry about those. That's for like dividend stocks and reinvestments. Uh, the last thing that I think we can change here, uh, we can actually right click here, go to our trade ticket settings. And in here, we have a couple of settings here that we'll go over really quick. So trade ticket settings. Do we want to set the order verification? So when you hit your hot key or when you hit the buyer sale, it'll pop up a message that says, are you OK with this order going through? For me, I like entering quickly. I don't have time for messages to be popping up. So I leave this unchecked. OK, so as soon as I hit the buy, it's going through with no questions asked. 
The next thing is the order action selection. You can use the trade ticket uh, with order actions menu. So it'll actually put an order. Let me change it over here. And we have three options, clear action upon the order submission. So when you submit your order, it'll clear what you just entered and set up for a new um, fresh start or a fresh order entry. The next option is maintain the action. So if I just bought 100 shares, it'll keep that 100 shares in there for me to either buy or sell it again. Uh, the next one is set to closing action for open position. So as soon as I buy 50 shares, it'll go ahead and get ready to sell 50 shares. OK, uh, but let's go ahead and hit save and see what what changes over here. So here is the change here. It adds a little instead of having the buy, sell or whatever buttons over here, we get the buy, sell and short here and we can just select which ones that we want here. Uh, to change that back, we'll go back to our trade tickets. We'll change this to use trade ticket with order action buttons instead of the menu. And this is what I usually use on mine. Um, abbreviated button labels, I like to abbreviate because I like to save space. The next thing is the multi-leg options. We'll skip that. We're not really doing options, um, uh, order prices. Price increments, though. So when you are uh, when you have your number here like 1560 and you use your arrow keys to to move that number, this is the increment that it will move by. Right now it's set for 10 cents, which I don't know why it's set that high. It should be like one cent. I like it to go one cent at a time, but I guess I can leave it at 10 since it's been there forever. Uh, but when I try to move this with my arrow keys, it'll go 1570, 1580, 1590, 10 cent increments up or down. And that, the last thing that I want to go over is the cancel selection button. So the cancel selection button will either allow you to cancel all entries on a ticker or on a symbol or just the last one. So. I actually have my hotkey set up and I'll be doing a video on the hotkey setup. Um, how to make a hotkey to cancel all or to cancel one. Now, what does it mean by the last submitted? So let's say if you've submitted 10 orders and you don't want to get rid of all 10 of your orders, you only just want to get rid of the last one that you place. Well, this is what this is good for. Cancel last submitted order for the current symbol. Now, let's say if you have 10 orders and you want to wipe them all off. Well, you'll select this button and you have this button that says cancel all. If I select this one, which is just the cancel the last, this should change to cancel last when I hit save. Cancel last right there. And we'll go back in our settings and we'll change that back and save. All right. So that is it for this video. Like I said, I'm making these shorter. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, um, please let me know on my channel, HH Trader, because the comment section over here isn't connected to my YouTube, so I don't see the comments. I have to actually manually come in and check. But you can ask questions on any of my videos uh, over at HH Trader, and I will answer you very, very quickly. All right, guys, so that is it for today. I'm making these videos shorter, trying to kind of compact my editing time uh, so I can put out more content for you guys. Um, but don't forget to check out the rest of the content here on Framework Fortune. You can also check out my live streams over at HH Trader. I will drop those uh, links in the description. And uh, you can subscribe to both channels. We're coming full force. And we're really trying to get this thing growing. I also have a Twitch as well, uh, HH Trader. If Twitch is your preferred uh, method of viewing, but since you're here on YouTube, you're probably watching on YouTube anyway. Uh, but that is it. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Peace.